Hello everyone! In the last video we learned about how we can do this tab bar here at the bottom for the material widget and this time we will look at how we can do the same thing for the Cupertino tab bar and yeah last time we created this here so you can switch here between the pages and this time we want to put here this Cupertino tab bar instead of this bar here inside and we want to have the same functionality like this. And here in the middle we want to have the centered so that we have here this docked centered Cupertino tab bar. Alright, so we start with this example here. So if you haven't watched the last video then watch the last video. I go here to the main file and then I go here to the scaffold and here we had this bottom navigation bar. And instead of this tab bar material widget we will this time create a Cupertino widget. So let's go here to our widget and create a new file. And I write here tab bar Cupertino widget. And this widget works similar to the one which we had before. So I will copy here exactly this one because we also get here an index and also we can here change the tabs. So let's just put this here also inside to make it easier and I will replace this one and we will also convert this here to a stateful widget so that we can have a state and here inside we want to build the Cupertino tab bar so I write here Cupertino tab bar and here we want to place all our items inside so basically we can create here some items at the top so I write here final items and these items are from bottom navigation bar item and here inside we simply write bottom navigation bar item and this gets two parameters so first of all we can set here an icon so I set here this icon for example for search and the second property is the title property and here we put a text inside so I will put here search for example and then I need to create here these other items also. So I will just copy them. So these are the other items. We put these items inside of our Cupertino bar. And now we can also set these on tap method. So I simply will call this on tap, which we have put here inside. So I call this one. And this gives here an index and we will simply forward this index to our unchanged tab and therefore we write here widget in front and yeah I think that's it almost so we will go here to our main file and we'll also import this here and let's see if this is already showing something so you can see we have here these tabs and I cannot change them right now because I'm not making use of the index which we put also inside of here so let's change it so i go here inside and here we have something which is called current index and i will just supply it with the index which we get from the outside world and if i refresh it then you can see that we can change these tabs okay here's a problem for the last one but we will fix it quickly i don't like these gray colors so i will go here and change it so i set it here to the color of black and now these icons should get a black color like you can see and yeah i think that's fine and now you see that we have here this floating action button over this tab bar but it's not like really start like it was before with the android version so we want to have here a curve and that it looks much better with the Cupertino tab bar. And how we can achieve this is a little bit more complicated than with the material widget, but at least it is also working fine with the Cupertino tab bar. Okay, let's get started to get this curve design here. So I will create a new method, which is called build notched Cupertino. And here inside we put a widget inside, so we put here child. And I write here also required in front. So what we want to do here is first of all we want to cut this here out and then we also need to draw a line later. So I will show you this step by step. So first of all I go here and write physical shape and in this physical shape this has a clipper so we can clip here something around this 
a floating action button and therefore I need to create here another class so I go here outside and I just paste it right now inside. I need also here to get this foundation and this class I got from the Flutter foundation library so this is what the Flutter team has written and with this one you can get this curve for this floating action button. So I will just reduce it here and put it here as a clipper inside. And here this gets some attributes, so we want to make sure that we select here the circular notched rectangle. So this is the rectangle so that we can have the shape. And we also need to supply here a geometry. And I will just set it here to the gym geometry listener. And we also set here a notch margin. I will later show you exactly what this is doing. So we want to create this listener here. So I will go here at the top of this file and create it. So it is this value listenable. And then we need to override a new method, which is called did change dependencies. So let's go here and write it did change dependencies. And here inside we set this geometry listenable to scaffold dot geometry of context and that's it what we need to do for this one and this physical shape gets also another property which we need to set so we set here a child and here inside we set child property which we put here inside and we also set here the property color colors dot transparent and yeah I think I have written enough so let's first of all test it out so I will wrap this Cupertino tab bar around this method, so it looks like this. And now the physical shape is trying to manipulate this Cupertino tab bar. So after we hot restarted this application, then we get here to this design. I mean, it didn't change much. So we need also to go here inside of this child and wrap it with a widget, which is called material. And then set here the color to colors.transparent and here the child and let's hot reload it all right and we also need to set here the clip behavior to clip dot anti alias with save layer and now you can see that this cupertino tab bar changed here so we have here this rounding and with this notch margin you can set here how close it should be to this floating action button so right now it's zero you can also make it higher like eight or whatever you like so I will keep like this and if you really look close at it so let's maybe go like this here and then you see here it's not really cool because we have here a line and here it looks more like there's no line so first of all let's get rid of this floating action button shadow so that we can see it more clearly so here in the main file I go to my floating action button and here I have to set the elevation to zero and also the highlight elevation to zero. So the first one is setting the elevation here so that we don't have a shadow and the second one is responsible if you click here on this button then it will not have the shadow. Otherwise if you have this inside, let's change it quickly, then you see here when if we tap here inside you get this shadow here around which we don't want. So I set both to zero and yeah now you see okay we need to also paint this line here for this bar because right now it doesn't look great here it stops somehow and that's what we do right now so we go back to our tab bar Copertino widget and we wrap this physical shape around a custom paint so we want to paint this border around and this painter gets a new bottom app bar painter so this is a class which we will create later and here inside we put again the same parameters like in this bottom app bar clipper so basically the bottom app bar clipper works the same as the bottom app bar painter only this one is painting something and this is clipping something so let's create this class here so i will go here down and copy here this class which we had before so instead of this clipper we write here painter and we extend here instead of this custom clipper we extend here the custom painter and here we don't need this one here 
and here we simply change a little bit so we don't return here directly this path we will store this path which we get here which is kind of cutting this here out around we will get this path and then we will paint this path with a line so how we do this is we create here a paint object and then we can set here for example a style and then we set the style here to a painting style of stroke so that we get later line and this line should be with a width of one so it's like a really thin line and then we can also set a color and I set it here to color first of all so I want to create here another property which is called color and this color is going here inside and we also set this color attribute here at the top maybe so we set it here and the next step is then to go here to the top and set a color so first of all we set right now a color of gray we will later change it so this is a gray of this line here at the top and we want to paint it here around this gray color so therefore i set here this color and the next thing is we change here the signature of this one so it's a paint method so this is overridden by this custom painter and this should reclip we can just remove it we don't need this because this custom painter has a different method which we need to override so it's called should repaint and here we simply return for now false so basically we need to finish here also this year up so we want to paint this line with the pass so we take here this canvas which we get and write here canvas dot draw pass and then we put here both inside so we put the pass which is the circular thing and we put here the paint inside to change the color so let's see how it looks like and you will immediately see that we have here this color around this so this is pretty cool and i will also change here this uh, color so in case it is a little bit different i will take the color of the copertino bar so i just put here this color inside and now it is 100 percent sure that this color is exactly the same as this here at the top all right now we got this here everything ready here in the middle but like you can see the icons are not really good formatted so here is a lot of space here for example every time and here's almost no space and this is what we want to change so what i will do is i will do here a quick and dirty trick so basically i write here container and container so i will create here an empty uh, bottom navigation bar item which is exactly placed in the middle so between emails and profile we create here an empty slot so let's hot restart it and then you see these items are better aligned and here we have more space in the middle and and now we need to change a little bit because we have here one extra index and we want to ignore this index so we need to do some calculation for it so basically i write here a new method which is called get index and here inside we transform the index which we get to a different index so if the index is two then we return here null so it's exactly if this index is matching with this item here which is our placeholder then we want to return here now otherwise we return here new index and we look if the index is bigger than two so if this index is profile or settings and in this case then we want to return here an index minus one otherwise we return here this index so this is only like making sure that we get here the right index later and that if we press here on this button set also we get here the right index because right now you saw we clicked here on the settings and then we get this error here so we need to change it all right so i hot restart it quickly so that we get rid of this error so basically to continue we will change here first of all the tab index so i will make here a block body and get here the new index so it's basically transforming the index on what we clicked and get here a new one and if the new index here is equals to null then we want to return it so basically we want to ignore here our placeholder our index 2 so if we click here we want to ignore it otherwise we will change here 
tab and we want to set here the new index inside. So it's like some calculation what we are doing here to make this right. I need to change here also this one. For the current index, I also need to change it. So I write here, if the index is greater than two, I will return here widget, widget dot index plus one, otherwise widget dot index. All right, now let's hot reload this application. And now you see that we can change here to the right pages already. Okay, and now that's it. So we transformed all of our indices with this method here. Now, if we tap here through this tab bar, everything changes properly. And I quickly want to show you also another hint. So here in the main file, I put here this scaffold extend body inside. So this is from the last video. If you haven't watched it, I will quickly show you. So if I hot reload it, you will see that here we have a white background. So if we have something here, like the images are not shown through this white background. And to change it, you simply go to your scaffold on top and add here this extend body to true. And if you do this, you will see that the content is under it and you can scroll easily. And it looks like a really good Copertino tab bar. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a little bit more complicated than the tab bar of the material widget, but if you are searching for a design that you can also match with Android and iOS, and with this video, you can later show on iOS this tab bar and on Android the other tab bar. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.